Good thing that was a Reaper Bones. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. I gotta build something today. So I looked around for something fun and easy and I came across this dollar store dragon that has been sitting in a box for almost two years. But I kinda wanna challenge myself. I wanna do the whole build using things that are available at the dollar store. I don't know if in the States you guys have Dollarama. If you don't, I feel sorry for you because it is the best dollar store around it is so much better than Dollar Tree because they actually get some decent stuff. Or you can buy a cheap one at another store if you have to and everything else, I'm gonna limit myself to things that are available at the Dollar Store. Now, I'm not gonna go and buy a brand new glue gun from the Dollar Store, I already have a glue gun, it's not the one there, but you get the idea. You can buy a glue gun there, you can buy glue, you can buy paint, you can buy a utility knife, all those sorts of things. I'm gonna try to keep that in mind while building this. I hope this works. Wish me luck. The sculpt on these dragons is surprisingly decent for a really cheap toy. The biggest problem with them is the really goofy poses, huge gaps at the joints, and well, the paint job. Before I did anything to this though, I needed to wash it. Yeah, that's a sink full of dirty dishes. I know, I could have cleaned up before filming, but I didn't because this was a time pressure project. Anyways, it's important to wash stuff like this before working with it because injected molded plastic often has mold release still on it, especially cheap Chinese toys. If you try to paint this stuff just as is, well, you're gonna have a bad time as your paint probably won't bond. I dried the figure and made sure to take it apart and get the water out of all the joints as well. Then I could put it back together and start figuring out how I could repose this thing. It is somewhat limiting because of the sculpt, but I figured it would look best if this guy was on all fours instead of standing up like a dragon begging for a dog treat. The problem with posing him like this is that it put the head in a really bad position, pointed straight at the ground, and there really wasn't much I could do about it with the way that the neck was bent in the sculpt. The fastest way to correct this would be to cut off a bit of the neck to create a new angle for the head to sit at. Unfortunately, this meant that the little ball that held the head in place was gone, so I figured the fastest way to secure the head back on again was to use some hot glue. I was wrong. For some reason, the hot glue really didn't bond to this particular plastic. I knew then that I'd have to super glue it in place. I really wanted to get the position of the head right, so I moved on to securing the arms and the legs so that the pose was locked in before positioning the head. I just super glued each joint, then positioned the thing the best way I could given the constraints of the sculpt. Once I was happy with the pose, I glued the head on using super glue. These joints, especially the head, were not actually that strong, and the gaps were as big as the Grand Canyon. The best way to fill these gaps would be with something like Milliput or Green Stuff, but that would break my rule for the dollar store material challenge, and it would also mean waiting for epoxy putty to cure, which I didn't have time to do. So I turned to one of my favorite techniques of baking soda and super glue. This wasn't breaking my rule, as you can absolutely get super glue and baking soda at the dollar store, or at least I can, and that's exactly where I buy mine normally. 
I love this trick. I've used it a few times before on the channel and I even made an entire custom miniature using this technique. It instantly fills gaps and is incredibly strong. It's not the most elegant technique, but it's perfect for this challenge. All you do is pour on some baking soda, blow off the excess and drip baking soda on it. And it's an instant kind of plastic weld. Slight complication with this challenge I've given myself. I'm gonna need a base for this thing and I need something that won't warp. I don't wanna just put it on cardboard. It needs to be something stable. If this wasn't a dollar store challenge, I would just cut a piece of MDF and bevel it and put it on that, but I don't wanna break that rule. If I were actually going to a dollar store to get some things for this build, I would buy some little, they have these little packages of hobby projects, of little pieces of plywood and stuff, and there would be an appropriate piece of wood that I could use to base this, but I don't actually wanna go out. I'm making this challenge even harder on myself because I'm trying to make it with stuff I have on hand and fits within the constraints of the challenge. So it's not easy. But I found this in the garbage. <laughs> it's, uh, it's one of the stands from like a tabletop picture frame. It's just a piece of thin eighth inch kind of hardboard. It's garbage, so I think it works in the challenge, plus dollar store. They sell cheap picture frames that have these, so that's why I'm using this really weird thing for a base. Let's make it. Why am I trying to make a base for this thing? Just out of habit, you think things need a base, but honestly, this thing just sits totally fine on the table as is. I don't need to make a base. The simplest option is usually the right one. So I happily scrapped the whole base idea and moved on to painting. If I were not constraining myself with materials here, I definitely would have primed it using an aerosol primer or a flat spray paint. But I'm pretty sure no dollar store, no matter how good it is, sells spray paint. I wish they did though. So I opted for my trusty Mod Podge and black paint combo, as you can usually get those there. This was not ideal, but it worked. For the paint, I decided to make this a green dragon for two reasons. One, green dragons are pretty iconic and I don't have one yet. And two, I was a little nervous of how the Mod Podge on this particular plastic would hold up over time. The original toy was green, so my thought was that if my green paint were to chip, a different shade of green underneath showing through wouldn't stand out looking as bad as a contrasting color. Again, if it weren't for my constraints on materials, I'd use my miniature paints, but I stuck to cheap 50 cent craft paint and only a very limited number of colors. I put a base coat on of an olive green over the entire figure. After that, I mixed a lighter shade of the same green by mixing it with some ivory and gave the whole thing a fast and dirty dry brushing to start bringing out some of those details. Using the same ivory I already had out, I started picking out little things like claws, teeth, eyes, and horns. I made sure to use a cheap detail craft paintbrush for this to stay true to my challenge.
This thing needed a black wash to help this not so splendid fast paint job. Again, I could have used good off the shelf washes or even my improved homemade wash, but even that uses some supplies that you have to get at an art store. So I reverted to the classic simple wash recipe. This is just water, black craft paint, and a bit of flow aid. For the flow aid, I used dishwasher rinse aid since I did in fact buy this very bottle at you guessed it, Dollarama. The longest part of this build was waiting for the wash to dry. I thought I'd be done after that, but I realized I had forgotten to paint his tongue red or to put pupils in his eyes. So I got to work taking care of that. Again, I did this with the cheapo paintbrush and paint. At this point, I thought the spiky bits on his head and the horn should have been painted white with the rest of the details, so I took care of that. I also thought that the white details looked a little too white, so I mixed a simple yellow wash to kind of age it a bit. Really, it was just watered down yellow paint. I didn't bother with the rinse aid on this step. I put it on all of the white details and for some reason thought, huh, why not put it all over everything to see what happens? So that's what I did. This thing is done and I'll get to the glamour shots in a moment, although I'm not sure I wanna put it under the scrutiny of high res photos, but it is complete. The challenge is done. Did I succeed? My goal was to make something quick and easy and to do it only using things from the dollar store. And in that regard, I did succeed. Projects done, didn't use anything that didn't meet the criteria and I have a totally usable green dragon miniature, which I didn't have before. But I think the challenge I set out for myself was a little bit crazy. The idea of a speed build is good and I can make all sorts of really nice things really quickly using all of the tools and things that I have at my disposal. I also could go to a dollar store and buy things only there and come up with something really good, but it's hard to do that quickly. You know the old saying, cheap, fast, and good. Pick two. That's, that's kind of true here. I went for fast and cheap, so it's hard to make it good. The other thing is that I didn't actually have access to all the stuff at the dollar store. I didn't plan this out and build stuff. I just used stuff that I had, so it wasn't easy. And I mean, this is not a totally original build. I didn't build something from scratch. I took a toy and I modified it, so you know. The whole idea here though is that you shouldn't let what you have available limit you. I hope this video inspires you if you're in the scenario where you don't have a lot of good stuff at your disposal or you can't afford much or you just don't have a lot of time. That shouldn't stop you. No matter how many limitations you have in place, you can still enjoy the hobby and come up with cool things. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little bit different than usual. If you did, hit that like button. Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, yeah, uh, let's close this out with some glamour shots. And don't forget, if you like what I do, the best way you can help me keep doing it is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. Check it out. I would love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. Okay, let's clean this up and take some photos.